literally cutting all this blonde off today. You're making me second guess, Des. It's not fair. You know, I won't be able to put my hair back in like a ponytail. What? Ah, <laughs> uh, here we go. No way. No going back. Des, stop. You're making me nervous. I had to silence the rest of the video. These are not the original files. When my sister initially edited the video, she put a copyright sound over it, and you know we're not trying to get banned on YouTube, but yay, cut off the damage. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those of you joining me for the first time, my name is Demi. I'm a fashion model currently living in Cape Town, South Africa, and I'm a DIY hair and skincare fanatic. So that video you just saw was May of 2020. It's currently May 2024, so it has been four years since that video. I'll put up some before pictures um, that you've probably already seen in previous videos if you've been with me for a minute. But as you guys can see, I cut my hair really, really short, like, like Halle Berry type short. And now I'll just sort of give you a close up with what my curls are looking like now. My hair is currently waist length, but I'll, let me just do like a 360 for you. And this is where my hair is now currently, four years later after I chopped it off. I initially was platinum blonde and then my agency wanted me to be more of a honey blonde. I even had the platinum eyebrows. It is so hard to maintain bleached or dyed hair. That was my first time in my life I had ever bleached or dyed my hair. So you're probably wondering how on earth did I grow my hair waist length in four years. Let's just get it out the way. It was not by commercialized products. It was all DIY hair care. I'm going to share with you in this video four tips that I did in order to grow my hair as quickly as possible. I also want to note I'm not the only person on YouTube that's probably given this advice, but the cliche stuff works. Remember that. So my first tip is to not put any tension on your scalp. That can easily cause breakage, thinning hair. I don't know if you've heard of tension alopecia. It's where your hair starts thinning and breaking off and you end up getting bald spots because you're constantly putting a lot of tension in certain areas of your scalp. That could be cornrows, box braids, tight, tight ponytails to the point where you have a facelift and your eyes are like this. Yeah, we don't want that. One of my main hairstyles was of course like the two braids on the side i made sure that they were loose but also putting my hair in a low ponytail like this making sure it was loose so i would take my little band like this then i would wrap it around my hair just once and then my ponytail would be like this. Now moving on to the next tip. This is going to be the most important. I cannot stress this enough. Please, 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 from the bottom of my heart, do research on the products you plan on buying before you buy them. The majority of hair care products have chemicals in them that we cannot pronounce, even celebrity hair care. Let me show you what I'm talking about and give you an example. Now for all of my Beyonce fans, Beehive, don't come for me, I'm just here to educate y'all. Let's go on Beyonce's hair care website and check out the ingredients. So we're gonna go on her website, Sacred Hair, and I want you guys to pay attention to something very important. So I'm just gonna go shop, we're gonna go under shampoo, and then we're gonna click the first one. Ooh, this, these graphics are cute, but that's not the point. So we're gonna scroll down, we're gonna click ingredients. Now, what I want you to pay attention to is that they only show the first four quote unquote important ingredients. You actually have to click on view more ingredients and then you're gonna see a bunch of words you cannot pronounce. So what I like to do, I like to copy and paste. I have no idea what this word is. I think it's ethyl, glyc ethyl something glycerin. I don't know how to pronounce it. But I want you guys to pause this video and I want you guys to pay attention to what this says. This says people with existing skin conditions are more likely to be impacted by the byproducts containing this ingredient. Do your research, everyone. Next is phenoxythanol, and this is the most harmful of them all. 
Exposure to venocythanol has been linked to reactions ranging from eczema to severe life-threatening allergic reactions. Just because your favorite influencer or your favorite celebrity comes out with a new hair care line or skin care line for that matter, doesn't mean you just jump on it. Please do your research for the ingredients. My third tip is doing hair rinses. I did a lot of hair rinses. I loved experimenting with different herbs flowers even just putting it all in a pot figuring out what works best for me i will link my hair care playlist down below so you guys can get all the recipes and some of my favorite recipes that i currently do some of my favorite herbs i love using are rosemary sage rose petals and cinnamon sticks i have religiously used rosemary since i was 14 years old i've always sort of been a diy girly ever since i was a pre-teenager i always used to make my own leave-in conditioners with rosemary so i've been using rosemary for a very long time again i'm not the first person in the whole world to say this information but it really does work it helps stimulate your hair follicles the circulation as well as prevent gray hair. Herbs, plants, flowers have been around for the longest time. So again, please don't be easily influenced by the internet or people telling you that you should buy this because it's going to make your hair grow. Old school works. And then my last and final tip number four is going to be hair masks. Again, the essential part of hair growth is going to be scalp nourishment because obviously your hair grows from your scalp. My personal favorite hair mask is going to be bananas and honey. Now, in previous videos, I have mentioned that I do suffer from extreme dry scalp only in certain sections of my scalp. I do predominantly have an oily scalp, but when I was younger, my mom didn't know how to take care of my hair, so she was constantly putting chemicals in my hair in order to get it straight. On one magical evening, maybe she mixed something wrong, I don't know, but I ended up getting a really bad chemical burn on the, of the right bottom part of my scalp. And ever since then, I'm prone to getting scabs that just pop up out of nowhere on my scalp. And that's one of the main reasons why I decided to go DIY, because everything that I would buy from the store irritated my scalp to oblivion so i just decided to take the diy route the banana and honey hair mask is going to be for those that overall have a dry scalp especially if you're looking to soothe the irritation with any hair mask that you put on your scalp make sure your hair is completely clean any dirt dandruff grime that you have on your scalp is going to act as a barrier i'm not going to say it's going to prevent the hair mask from penetrating the follicles but it may not be as effective compared to if you have a clean scalp let me show you how i make my banana and honey hair mask All right, guys, if you've made it to the end of this video, congratulations. Give yourself a pat on the back. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I try to post once every week. Make sure to like this video. We have to let the YouTube algorithm know that you guys like my content. Also, let me know in the comment section below what other videos you'd like to see next. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you in my next video. Bye.